if you owe back taxes to the IRS or to your state, you need to watch this video because I'm going to explain some things to you to hopefully put your mind at ease and to maybe give you some ideas as to how to mitigate that or actually solve that tax problem so you can actually go to bed at night and sleep peacefully through the night. Now, look, if you don't know who I am and why I know this, my name is Avon Eka. Besides being a certified public accountant or a CPA for short, I also have been spending the last, I've spent the last 16 years working with individuals and small business owners with tax resolution problems, back taxes, uh, IRS notices, IRS audits even. And what you don't understand, what a lot of people fail to understand is there's a process that the IRS has to follow when it comes to uh, notices and inquiries and even audits. And too many times, if you're an individual that doesn't know these processes, doesn't know how the system works, you can get yourself into trouble by giving the wrong information, too much information that leads to other, other rabbit holes that the IRS starts searching, and it ends up costing you tens of thousands of dollars. So in this video, it's going to be really quick, in this video, I want to share with you some things you need to think about if you've been getting a bunch of IRS notice because you have back taxes. You know, the first thing I want to share with you is you shouldn't panic. You know, I remember when I was working with a client and they'd, been, they'd gotten a few of these letters and they were freaking out when they actually finally called me and said, hey, look, what do I do, Abong? I'm freaking out. This is insane. They're, they're, the IRS is threatening in this letter to levy my bank account. They're threatening to uh, come take the assets from my business and take money out of my personal account. And, and he's like, this is illegal. How can they do this? And I said, you know what? It's absolutely legal. They can do that. And I'm surprised they haven't done it yet. And the same thing with the state. And he's like, why? Well, it's very simple. He had ignored several letters from the IRS. It doesn't happen automatically. What happens is, there's a pro like I said earlier, there's a process that the IRS and the states have to go through in order to go from zero to 100. You don't, they don't automatically just go, hey, this guy owes us money, take everything. It's not that kind of, it's not that kind of uh, deal here. A lot of times there's a series of time, there's a series of processes and, and steps they have to go through before they start garnishing your wages, which is a fancy word of taking money out of your wages, you know, out of your, out of your, um, out of your, out of your salary. And they can do that. You'll see on your check, you'll see IRS garnishment, you'll say state garnishment if, this, if you get a judgment for that. Uh, other things, other situations um, the IRS can do, they can levy your bank accounts. Uh, they can, they'll find out where you, where you bank. You say some of the big banks, some of the small banks, uh, to find out where you bank, and then they'll put in an order to, to, to levy, which means they can take money out of your account for what you owe. And here's the thing. If you've been ignoring the IRS and the state, and they can say you owe them like twenty grand and $20,000, and you have $20,000 in your bank account, and you need that to, to, to run your business, to run your household, and so forth. If, you owe, if they say you owe them twenty, and you have twenty in your account, they'll just take the money out of your account. And next thing you know, when you go to sign to, to sign a check, to pay a bill, to pay your mortgage, to pay your rent, lease, whatever, everything bounces. And then you, are, you have to deal with that nonsense in, a, in, in addition to the IRS taking your money. And when they take your money, they're not giving it back to you, right? Well, even if you go through a lot of steps, it becomes a lot harder. So what you want to do is you want to get in front of that before that happens. So um, the reason why there's a process is because it's all it's by law. It's in their regulations. So when they start talking about levying, doing a bank levy, or garnishing your wages, you probably this is probably the third or fourth or f almost fifth letter, letter that you've dealt with in some capacity. It all depends on where you're at. And sometimes with the state, sometimes it's faster than that. And so what you want to do is you want to have a conversation with them first. And here's, the th here's another tip for you. Don't talk to them alone. Find someone who has experience in this, in this area, right? You wouldn't be your own lawyer if you had if you had a legal trouble. You had, the cops come to you and you need a lawyer. You're not gonna you're not gonna do it yourself. How many times have you seen people on TV talk themselves into jail because they don't have a lawyer, even if they didn't do it, because they didn't have a lawyer to guide them accordingly according to the process? What you're paying for is process, right, and knowledge. You're not paying for time. So there are a lot of companies out there that do this. We do tax representation and uh, tax uh, mitigation, uh, tax debt. Uh, and a whole, whole, a whole host of other things. You can go click on the site depending on where you're watching this. Uh, there should be a link somewhere in the description or part of this video. Click that real quickly. You can go to, our, go to economicstaxrelief.com and you'll see uh, about me and our company and what we do and how we help individuals and some of the, some of the problems people have with back taxes. I want to give you another example. Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into some things you need to think about if you get letters from the IRS and what to think about so you don't start freaking out. The first thing... Another example of what we saw is 
somebody owed, I have, we had a client who owed like three years of back taxes. The IRS noticed they had back taxes. So what ends up happening is this. There's a whole b- bunch of scenarios, but I'm going to give you one ex- scenario example I see often. They had back taxes, right? They hadn't paid taxes, sorry. They hadn't filed a tax return in several years. The IRS catches wind that they've generated income for the last couple of years. So sometimes the IRS will just take, because when you get your W-2, right, if you're an employee or if you're a 1099 or something to that effect, uh, the IRS gets a copy of that, and then they'll, they, they match that with the ones you, you report on your return. And if they match, then it's cool. If they don't match, they say, hey, you're, you're underreported. If you underreport income, um, they'll come after you. If you overreport income because you're going to pay more tax on it, they're probably not going to complain. But if you underreport and it doesn't tie or doesn't agree, then that's when they start sending you letters. But in many cases, if you don't file at all, at some point they'll find out. If they find out, they'll they'll prepare a return as if as if um, they'll prepare a statement as if it's as as if it's a return. Everything completely basic, so they won't account for all your your personal inter- personal deductions. Uh, maybe you have mortgage interest. They won't do. They won't take that. They'll, they won't take the property tax. They won't take your sales tax. They'll just literally take uh, the basic standard deductions, standard exemptions. Well, that's gone now, but the standard deductions and all the standard basic standard deductions that you are uh, that that you are um, that you qualify for, right? Not taking into account the additional things you've paid, additional th- money you've spent for things that you can get deduct, you can get a deduction for, right? Especially in business, maybe you bought property or you bought not property, you bought like you bought uh, depreciable assets or fixed assets. But they won't take any of that into account. They will literally just take the basic level and then assess you if you owe tax, right? And so one of the ways to fix this is we file the tax return from the oldest first. You file the oldest the third year, then you file the second year back, and then you file the last year back, right? And in many cases, I've seen with some of the clients you've worked with, when we file these returns, they are actually ended up being owed money, right? And so they were afraid at one point, thinking they didn't they didn't have to file taxes, or they were afraid to file taxes. But then what ended up happening is they ended up the IRS owed them money, and that happens a lot too. So there's another reason why you should actually take this into account. So let me quickly go through some things you need to think about, um, some things to remember when you're dealing with the IRS. If you have if you have multiple letters. Right, things to think about, and I, I don't want you to go out this alone. There's so many people who screw themselves because they go out this alone. They get they get scared, they panic. Either they ignore the letters and throw them away because the IRS is not going anywhere, or they try to do it themselves and they talk. They call talk on the phone to somebody, and that person doesn't know what they're doing sometimes too because they're just they're answering the phone. They're not the technical person. Um, in many cases. You, it may take a while to get there. So I I try not to get things. I try to get things in writing. I like to be sent letters on a regular basis uh, in, in addition to the phone calls because everything needs to match up. And when we send the letters, we can document we sent the letters, we can document receipt, we can document all those things. I can document a phone call. I can say this guy uh, who's an IRS agent said this and that, but that's not binding legally or in any other capacity because I didn't record the call. So there's no way I can go back and say, oh, Mr. Jones said X, Y, and Z. And Mr. Jones could probably say, I don't remember that. I speak to a thousand people in a day. So. That's why, and he, he and Mr. Jones may be wrong, right? So in many cases, that's why I don't rely on what they tell me on the phone. I always send things in, in writing in the mail. That's another thing that you need. That's another reason why you need a tax representation person, so that that person, someone like us, that's where we can actually show you um, what needs to, we can explain what needs to happen, and then provide the documents accordingly in a way that's easier for them to go through. So the first thing is don't ignore the notices. Um, too many times people ignore the notices and then they end up losing all their money because the IRS charges them uh, additional penalties, fees, interest, and things that they don't have to pay, right? Uh, in many cases, if you talk to us, we may be able to get some of those penalties waived. Uh, there's some programs that the IRS has out there that we can actually wait, get those penalties waived if you qualify, okay? Uh, the next is, um, uh, the IRS is required to explain your rights to you if you decide to talk to them. They're, they're required to, and they'll send you a, a form that actually explains your rights and what, what you should do. And that's why speaking with somebody who's an expert in that space, like me, can actually help you. Um, again, before you go to the IRS and spend your time talking to the IRS, you should speak to an expert, like me. Click the link below. You can schedule a time for us to actually have a conversation. Um, we try to talk to people, get their, get their knowledge, and, and then we'll talk about whether or not what the next course of action should be. And in some cases, we may not be able to help you. Like what 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 has to happen? You may be able to take care of yourself. And if that's the case, we'll tell you. You can take care of this yourself. You don't have to hire us to do this. And you can just easily fill the, do these things and then you're on your way. Uh, sometimes, some people's cases are more complex. And if that's the case, then we'll talk about uh, a more formal arrangement. 
Um, again, never meet the IRS alone. If you're going to do, uh, in many cases, some of you guys, you don't have to meet the IRS, uh, but always have representation. The IRS makes mistakes. So you have to remember that. So it's good to have somebody else there to, to answer that. Um, in some cases, in many cases, you're not going to go to jail. So if you're afraid about going to jail, you're not going to go to jail. They may take all your money, but you're not going to go to jail. When you see celebrities and other people go to jail, it's because they willfully tried, not to not to avoid, but they willfully tried to evade through fraudulent manner and fraudulent means. So they created fake, fake uh, companies, fake businesses, fake accounts. Um, they took money out that was personal. They treated it. They didn't treat it um, the act the best way possible. And in many cases, you have um, the IRS. And to round this out, to finish this up, the IRS, you have options if you owe money to the IRS. Like there's there's there maybe some uh, suspensions of what to do, like through hardship. Like if you're really in a bad place, and by you paying the money can put can make you bankrupt. Um, offer offer and compromise can help. Some cases, uh, bankruptcy. Um, um, you may be able to get it, not all, and that's the thing you have to talk to a bankruptcy attorney to find out if you can get those that debt discharged. Sometimes you can't. Uh, there's some exceptions to that. Uh, you can come up with an installment agreement. We've helped some clients do the same thing as well, help them create an installment agreement based on, based on what they can afford to pay, and the IRS accepts it. It's a little bit of interest there, uh, but if it's not a lot of money, sometimes it'd be better just to use a credit card because the interest rate may be cheaper uh, than, than what the IRS will offer you. Um, again, I mean, let me go quickly through what can happen if you keep if you ignore the notices and ignore the IRS and the state. It could be bad for you. First is they can file a tax lien against you, and the liens are public, which means anybody can find those liens and it'll know your tax history, and that actually will affect your credit report. If you want to go buy a new car, buy a house, uh, rent a, rent a new place to live, uh, buy buy equipment on, on on account or credit. They can levy your bank account. I said that earlier. Levy is a fancy word of coming in. And, and legally taking money out of your account like robbery, okay? They can garnish your wages. We talked about that earlier. They can close down your business, force your business to close. Uh, they can seize and sell your home, your actual home, the home you live in. They can come in, take it, kick you out, and sell it so they can settle the debt. Uh, they can damage your employment and business relationships because everybody knows now that you have an IRS tax lien. Sometimes if you owe the IRS, if you're a professional, it's a problem. Like, for example, as a CPA, I can't owe the IRS unless I, I have to have... Um, an agreement with them if I owe them money, right? Um, they can assess you personally for corporate uh, employment tax. This is huge. If you have a business, you have employees, and you have not been making payroll tax payments, you need to listen up. Speak to us immediately so we can help you there because that can be an actual problem. Uh, the IRS is going after people who aren't, uh, companies who aren't paying and submitting payroll taxes. That's huge. That's literally almost, that's tax theft. Um, another thing they can, they can put you in a monthly installment uh, payment uh, arrangement that's too high. Right, if you're not careful, they can automatically say, okay, you owe us $1,000 a month, and you can't afford to pay $1,000 a month. Right, So you need to, don't ignore this. Um, they can contact your banker, your neighbors, your friends, business relationships uh, concerning your, your tax liabilities and what you owe. Right, And they can also get uh, third parties to go after, go after your assets too, like collection agencies and stuff like that. And I've seen that happen as well. That's when people call me, like, oh my God, what's going on? Who's this guy? And I'm like, oh, this basically going through this debt. It says that you owe the IRS you know, fifty thousand dollars, and you you'd ignore it. And it's like, well, I didn't think I had to pay it. Like, yeah, actually, you do. So, um, that's the quick message today. If you're in a situation where you have ten thousand uh, dollars of IRS tax debt or more, or even or state tax, um, don't ignore the letters. Uh, I've gone through what the IRS can do to you if you're not careful. And but more importantly, here's this: um, let's talk about how we can we can help you get to that next level of getting this clear and taken care of based on your, your circumstances, your facts and circumstances of your, for your particular case. If you ignore the IRS letters, it'll be drastically bad for you. And I, I wanna stop that from happening. So uh, the call to action right now for you is to click the link, schedule a time to speak with me or someone on my team, and we'll be able to figure out the next course of action. If we can help you, we'll let you know. If we can help you, we'll be able to let you know. Maybe it's something you can do yourself, we'll let you know as well. There's no incentive in trying to sign everybody and we can't help them. It's a waste of time, and it will ruin our credibility and our um, reputation. So, uh, if you have any questions, you can put the you can you know wherever you find this video, just just mention a, put in the comments below, and we love to hear from you. Your thoughts, your comments, and everything else. You've seen a lot of our videos. We talk about talk about taxes a lot uh, on television. I'm talking about taxes. I'm talking about the economy, and this is going to be a very new time because of the tax law changes in 2018. 
And I, now the IRS is going to be cracking down because the tax rates drop. So therefore, there may be some um, decrease in, in, in people getting, uh, getting um, the IRS getting taxes. So I'll talk to you soon. Take care.